Good morning, Rob. And the family says they have new information in this case that they want to share with the world. They are hoping, pleading for any more assistance from the U.S. federal government. The family of Shankwella Robinson has presented new disturbing details concerning the ongoing case to the President of the United States. A combination of documents revealing a medical examiner's findings, interviews with hotel staff, and law enforcement reports were released on Tuesday, along with a letter sent to President Joe Biden calling for an arrest. In the letter addressed to President Biden, Robinson's attorneys urged White House officials to find those responsible for what happened to the 25-year-old. My clients recognize that the U.S. government has many priorities and responsibilities, but believe that intervening in this case would not only serve the interests of justice, but also send a clear message that transnational criminal activities will not be tolerated. The letter stated, in the letter, the attorneys asked for help from the U.S. government in two specific ways. The United States can follow the extradition protocol and turn over the individual or individuals responsible for Shankwella's debt to Mexican authorities. Alternatively, U.S. federal law enforcement agencies can request concurrent jurisdiction with Mexican law enforcement agencies, which would permit U.S. prosecutors to bring the case in the United States as the involved parties are U.S. citizens. The letter read, the letter then proceeded to mention that a warrant had been issued to D.J. Jackson, who was one of the six people that Shankwella had traveled with. As a result of the investigation, a warrant was issued for D.J. Jackson by Mexican law enforcement, one of the six travel mates who fled to the United States after Shankwella was pronounced dead. Ms. Jackson was identified as the perpetrator of femicide against Shankwella Robinson, a homicide based on gender. The document read, the attorneys also called on President Biden and the State Department to extradite everyone on the trip back to Mexico to face criminal charges. What's more, the letter was accompanied by a detailed first-hand account submitted to Mexican authorities from the Villa Concierge who acted as a translator for the group during their trip. The concierge told an investigator with the Specialized Unit for the Investigation of Miscellaneous Crimes that Jackson was the main guest handling the trip arrangements. The concierge said the first night the group arrived, he noticed something was off. He said Robinson was the last person to join the group for dinner and that she seemed not to fit in with the others. The concierge said he greeted her but she did not smile or say anything to him. She was indifferent, nothing to do with the atmosphere of celebration. She was out of place at the party, he told the investigator. The next day, which was October 29th, around 1.50 p.m., the concierge told investigators DJ Jackson texted him and asked if he was available and where the nearest medical service was. I think my friend has alcohol poisoning and needs emergency service and someone to translate or speak Spanish for us, Jackson told him. The concierge offered to send a doctor who spoke English and who could determine if Robinson needed to go to the hospital. Jackson agreed to this and asked that the doctor be sent as soon as possible. Later, the concierge told investigators Jackson had texted him that Robinson would be taken to a hospital saying Robinson was not in serious condition but required an IV and was practically unconscious. According to the concierge, the group was discussing whether or not they had insurance that could pay for the hospital visit. Around 2 p.m., the concierge called the doctor on call for the villa. Later, an administrator of the villa contacted the concierge to ask if he requested an ambulance because security was notified to let one in. The doctor tried giving Robinson an IV and about an hour later, she began having convulsions. After this, he received a call saying Robinson had died and he needed to get to the villa as soon as possible. When the concierge arrived, he noticed one of the guests was speaking with police and after entering the house, he said the guests were sitting calmly around the bar and dinner table in the main room. He sought out Jackson to offer his condolences and she told him that they had informed Robinson's mother about the incident and that it was so fast to lose her in an instant for having had too much alcohol. According to the concierge, Jackson proceeded to ask him if he could give her a hug. She gave me a very indifferent hug, very cold. I saw a very sad guest, a skinny girl, and I saw that she was in pain, the concierge told the investigator. I left that area and stayed outside the main entrance to give them space to mourn and grieve. Minutes later, I heard laughter, the concierge went on to recall. Hours later, Jackson texted the concierge about dinner and he arranged a ride for the group to San Jose. But he found out later the group went to the airport. The next day, a maid told the concierge that the villa was empty and asked if the guests checked out. Surprised, the concierge said they had not any texted Jackson. Jackson didn't respond until the next day, which was October 31st, when she told him they had already left for the U.S. and asked if she needed to sign anything for checkout. Later, when the video was released of Jackson attacking Robinson, the concierge said he realized that Jackson had manipulated him in an effort to leave the country as soon as possible. What's more, the administrator of the villas told investigators in a separate interview that after seeing the viral video, he instantly knew that it was Jackson since he had met her previously. Meanwhile, a copy of the medical examiner's report that has since been forwarded to top government officials indicates that Robinson's demise was violent and that she had succumbed to a broken neck. 
A death certificate issued later said Robinson died of severe spinal cord injury and Atlas luxation, and a police report taken from the villa says she died of cardiac arrest. The medical examiner's report states there were friction burns along Robinson's left ankle, contusions on her head, and other injuries consistent with resuscitation efforts such as CPR and a defibrillator. Meanwhile, online users have called out Shankwilla's friends with some even labeling them monsters. Those aren't friends, they're monsters. The fact that someone sat there and recorded that brutal beating. No one stopped it. It must have been a setup. They took her there to brutalize her and it turned into murder. They all need to be brought up on charges. One person wrote, Something needs to be done ISAP. This happened in Mexico but USA citizens committed this horrible crime. Please Biden help bring these criminals to justice. Another person added, On G they were laughing after she was dead. Disgusting. If those Cabo 6 don't go to prison, they'll serve their time in hell. A third person wrote, while a fourth person simply said her so-called friends should be charged in the United States. Shankwella had traveled with six friends to Mexico on October 28, 2022. They checked into the Puerto Los Cabos Resort Apartments in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, where they were to spend their vacation. A day later, she was found by paramedics in their apartment in an unresponsive condition. After several attempts to resuscitate her, she was declared dead at 5.57 p.m. Robinson's body was repatriated to the U.S. on November 12. The funeral service was held on November 19th at the Macedonia Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Her burial attracted hundreds of mourners, including dozens of family members, friends, and the community. A GoFundMe account that her sister, Quilla Lawn, had set up for the funeral costs also attracted a lot of interest, raising over $400,000. Meanwhile, Shankwella's mates whom she had met at Winston-Salem University left Mexico soon after Shankwella's death, with each of them visiting her family. However, as details about her death started to emerge, they went underground, most deleting their social media profiles and disconnecting their numbers. As of now, the Robinson family is calling for a thorough investigation to determine what happened to their beloved daughter and sister during what was supposed to be a fun and memorable vacation. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye!